This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. What's up? What's up? Winning Cures Everything. We're going to start doing this every Friday, I think. We're going to have a guest with us. It may be Roser more than once because, uh, it, well, we know each other and he's good at this. So <laughs> uh, we've got Mr. John Roser, Johnny Rose from The Chris Vernon Show, uh, along with a thousand other job titles that he holds. John, how you doing, buddy? Good, man. Good, man. You know, uh, since we're doing, we're talking uh, college football and uh, and NFL gambling, my, my, my nickname for that, because, you know, there's there's Vinny Verno, uh, Chris Vernon, there's his, uh, his, his buddy Vinny Verno. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be, uh, I'm Johnny the Fish. Johnny the Fish. Okay, okay. Johnny, we can roll with that. Yeah, John, John, yeah Johnny the Fish. I, I think that's what I'm going to go with. And Johnny uh, the know, Fish. I actually bought a... Yeah, I actually bought like a. Uh, I, I haven't. I haven't found a way to use it yet because I'm actually going to buy a hat too. That's got one of those like bass fish that <laughs> sticks out the front of it. One of those 3D hats. Yes. I'm actually going to buy one of those. Uh, I tried to get one off Amazon, but it, the earliest to get here could get here was like, it's like a month and a half from Good now. And I'm gracious. like, what in the world? Like, I couldn't even get it sent like next day, or like I could, but it would have been like an extra forty bucks. I'm like, okay, I, I don't want the hat that bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but I bought like a little, I bought like a little kids fishing pole for like ten bucks at Bass Pro Shop. That's <laughs> Over off Sycamore View. Yeah, yeah, because because we're fishing for winners, man. We're fishing for winners. Oh, a hundred percent. What we're doing here, and and you got some last week, five and zero oh against the uh, against the number last week. Yeah, man. So yeah, what I tried, yeah, I know it was pretty crazy. That's um, a, yeah, it, you I, had a killer what, week. Yeah, what I tried to do was. Because like the, the the week two, what I did is I just had too much spread out, and I've kind of realized I had I had I had like small money on just too many games, and what I kind of realized is when you when you have like the more bets you make, the more of a shot you got to, to lose. have a losing. You're gonna have a losing record. Yeah. Like you know, Vegas wasn't built on everyone winning everything, you know, it's, it's these, these gigantic sports books, uh, whether it's the Westgate and I know Circa, uh, Circa releases, you know, they put out their lines like early now, they put out their lines before the Westgate does, but Circa is building their casino and sports book. They're building it on Fremont Street at the end, at one of the ends of oh, Fremont yeah. Street. I don't know if, I don't know if you've seen it. Dude, oh, I've seen it. Book. I talked look, about it on the show. I mean, it looks, looks like insane. The, the, the most immaculate, that, I mean, that is like heaven. Well, it's, it's where they're going to host VSIN. They're going to host all sorts of different stuff. Any any big time production that comes out there is going to be hosted in that sports book, which is I I I cannot wait. I can't wait to get no, back it, out there for it. it yeah, it's it, no, it, it's going to be amazing. But what I realize that yeah, it's like the more games you bet, like you're gonna just lose. Like you're gonna lose them. You're gonna you're like if you bet, you know five games like man you got a chance you can go four one three and two you can go five and oh like i like i like i ended up doing last week but if you bet like 15 games dude the chances are you're probably going like six and nine <laughs> you yeah. know like that's, that's it's probably what's gonna happen and you're gonna get end up you're gonna end up getting murdered on a couple of them whether it was like the uh i had like the under in the florida state louisiana monroe game or whatever or oh, the yeah. lafayette whoever they played that, that, that they, ended up going 89 like, yeah <laughs> yeah, it is per- and the like. I'm, I'm set perfect, and then Florida State did, does what they did against Boise the week before. They just start giving yep. up a gazillion points in the fourth quarter. Game goes to overtime. I've got under 52 and a half on Tennessee BYU. The game's freaking 16 to 13. Like I've got it nailed, and then Tennessee like gives up a 70 yard play. The and final. then you go to and overtime, BYU, and you, yeah. Then you go to overtime, and touchdowns get scored, and the game ends up going, and you just end up getting killed on. So. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do, you know, Vinny Verno said, pare it down. I pared it down. I just did five things I liked. I had, um, and the only one, like, I'm really upset about that I won, and the only reason I'm upset about it is because I didn't put more on it, was uh, Ohio State. I got them, I got them minus, uh, because I know the line opened at like 14 or 14 and a half against Indiana last week. Yeah. And I had it. I got it at 15 and a half. I went and got it at 15 and a half because I was like, this thing's going to jump up over 17. It will be over 17 by the time that game kicks off. And what did it close and at? 18 it, and a half, 19? I, yeah, it got up to 19. I think it, I think it ended up at 18 and a half, though. Yeah. Um, 
somebody probably bought it back down, went brought it back down a half point, but I got it at 15 and a half. And I, to me, that was like the lock of all locks. I don't <laughs> think there will be a bigger lock all season than Ohio State over Indiana. The lot I mean, the people are going, Indiana's covered seven of the last eight. I'm like, dude, the line has never been this low before. The no. line is always three touchdowns or more. It, I, and because I've had money on them, I had money on them the first two weeks of the season against Florida Atlantic and against uh, Cincinnati, a couple different things spread out, like on Ohio State, whether it was overs, whether it was first half lines or game lines. Like, I mean, I've watched, I've watched Ohio, I've, I've watched more of Ohio State this year than anybody, than any other team probably. And like, I was like, they are going to kick the living crap out of Indiana. And sure enough, they kicked the living crap out of Indiana. The other one I had, uh, I had Oklahoma State minus, uh, I bought it down to 13 and a half, uh, bought it from 14 to 13 and a half. And I had Oklahoma state over 38 and a half points. Dude, they jumped up like 17, nothing in the first like five minutes of the game. And I'm like, all right, I'm going. And you're thinking this is golden. Yes. Next next thing I know they're down one at halftime. And then like, they finally get it going a little bit. And then I think they turned it over. We had to, we had to sweat it a little bit. I mean, it it took that last uh, tuba Hubbard run. uh, yeah, it was crazy. it was a fourth and one too, man. It was a fourth and it was a fourth and one, and like the only way we get that is if he takes that to the house because if he doesn't take it to the house and just gets the first down, or even if he doesn't get the first down, like well, Tulsa gets the ball back, but if he gets the first down, well then like they're, they're not gonna yeah they're probably not gonna score the line or they're taking yeah, yeah or they're taking a knee and so we got really lucky that hit me over thirty eight and a half points that hit the that That's, covered the spread. You know, talking about this and week then, that terrifies me about Oklahoma State going to Austin. Like when I first yeah. saw the line, it came out at seven, and I was like, I really want to take Texas here. Like I think Texas is really yeah. good. And then I thought, man, and I started looking at the numbers and how Gundy has won, you know, four straight in the series and five of the last six, and they always cover as an underdog. You know, it's the numbers are just ridiculous, and I'm like, man, I feel like I need to take Gundy here. Like I need, I love Spencer Sanders, I love, uh, I love Wallace, I love Hubbard. I, you know, but the other side of me is like, man, they kind of, yeah, they covered, but they didn't really look good against Tulsa. They hadn't really looked good in any of their first three games. You know, they they scored no, a lot. They- yeah, but their defense. Yeah, they, I mean, is rough. they had some stretch. Yeah, no, no, their defense is rough. That's what that's what you expect. It's why, you know, when they get into a game against like a, a good, like a really good team, and the game gets close at the end, um, because of how they play offensively, everything is so up tempo. Now with Hubbard, it does make it easier because they've got a stud running back. You know, probably even very well could be the best running back in the country. You know, if not the obviously DeAndre Swift's amazing. Taylor at Wisconsin's great. Um, you know, there are some great running backs out there, but he obviously is in the mix for you know top five running back in the country. He's he's right there. The kid's amazing. But the, the, so that can help them close out games. But typically, that's kind of a problem they have, especially against good teams, is trying to close out games. Um, teams that you know, a team like Texas who has more talent than them is, is when you try to when you're used to playing that up tempo, and then you got to get to a point where you got to slow it down, which is not the way they play at all. It could be a little bit more difficult for them. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I look. I think with this game, like I, I, I look. I love. I, I mean, Tom Herman. He's he's amazing. And I and look. Don't think that he doesn't know. And you know, he knows that Oklahoma <laughs> State beat them what four years in a row. What is it like? Haven't they beaten them like five straight times in Austin or something? Or yeah. four straight times in Austin. Also? Yeah, I think it's it's five straight uh, in Austin. It's yeah. This is it's a big game that, for him. Yeah. That to me, I think the play. If you're gonna do it, if if you want to bet one of the sides, I mean Texas is like minus one eighty on the money line. I'd find a way to put them in like a money line parlay or or tease that's them. One of minus, yeah, or tease them. I I think a minus one eighty in a money line parlay that can also help give more value to your money line parlay, especially if you have like a a Georgia at a minus six fifty in there or a Washington State that's at a minus like twelve hundred or something. That can help, you know, it can help give you a better payout on your money line parlay. Or the the thing I think the thing to do is just, you know what, bet small on the over and just root for points and have fun watching it. You know? Yeah. It's gonna be a fun game. It's gonna be a fun game. When Texas has and, got uh, they, they got injury problems on defense and, and their defense yeah. even with those guys in wasn't great by any 
by any stretch of the imagination. But and, and, and yeah, and, and Oklahoma State could play with like 15 guys on defense and they'd still give up like 30 points. Yeah, um, that lines up to uh, six you know. now. And so and, and and the money, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, or the percentage of bets is 65 that. to 35 Texas. So that's still not a crazy number. No, uh, 65 you know, 35 is all right. Texas is a, yeah, I mean Texas is a big name school, so I mean the the big name schools are going to get typically at least you know from the public. The big name schools uh, with a lot of fans are going to get they're they're going to typically get the higher percentage of bets. I did see the over under in this game at one point was like I think seventy four, maybe seventy five, and it was I saw it just so a few, it was at seventy three yesterday. Um, okay, I yeah, and, and it's seventy two and a half now. Ago, yeah, that's what I I just looked at uh, uh, MGM's the Play MGM app, and they yeah they've got it at seventy two and a half. You know, if that thing drops down a little bit more, it, it might not. It may just stick there at 72 and a half. It may go back up to 73. But, you know, if it went down a little bit, I mean, even a 72 and a half, man, like, it, 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 would it shock you if the final score is 45 to 38? Oh, or like, or that, even 42 to 35 gets you to the window. Right, exactly. 42 to 35 gets you to the window. Like, it, that, like to, me, to me, it seems like one of these teams is scoring in the 40s. Yes. Like that's like one of these teams is going to score in the forties. I, I feel like that's a given, uh, and, and that's that's the yeah, the, the right. fun part so about this, why, right? Yeah, like, and that's why I think the over. That's why I think the over is probably the way to go. Like, because I think even if Texas jumps out on them, and say Texas get say Texas builds like a forty one or a say Texas builds like a thirty eight twenty one lead or forty one twenty one lead, and they're going to the fourth quarter. Like I mean, it ain't anything for Mike Gundy to just score two touchdowns in the fourth quarter, yeah. and Tom Herman scores one, and it's you know forty eight thirty five is the like that. Yeah, there's, it, I mean, could, there's it could it could one hundred percent happen. Yeah, or or it's forty one twenty, it's forty one twenty one. Uh, Gundy gets two touchdowns and it's forty one thirty five, and then. You know, and you're pushing right there, and Herman has to go get like, and Herman ends up getting like, they Texas gets like a late field goal to seal it and make it 44 35. Like, to me, it's like, this is going to be a fun game because you know both of these offenses can score. You know both of their defenses have limitations to them. And so, look, man, in a game like this, to me, it is like, even if you just like, you don't, you don't have, to have super confidence in it because I honestly don't. Like, I mean, so to me, it's like if you want to just if you want to put something on it, just bet small on the over and just have fun. Just watch it, root for points, and have a good time. That's I think this will this will be a much more interesting night game as opposed to Georgia and Notre Dame, which is what everybody's talking about. But I just mm-hmm. like I think Georgia's probably going to kill them. Now I could I could well, foresee a situation where Notre Dame you know keeps it relatively close, but I, I can't. I, I just um, think Georgia's too good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I th- I think right now, like, um, you know, we we talked uh, on, on Vernon's show. And I think we, you know one of the questions I asked him and Lang Whitaker and and Rob Fisher was, I was like, who's the who's the player, who's the guy we're going to be talking about after this weekend? And you know, Lang Whitaker said he's a big Georgia fan too. Um, he said, I think DeAndre Swift and the Heisman Trophy is what we could be talking about after this weekend. And I'm like, well, I mean, that's certainly possible. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I mean, you see the amount of rushing yards that Notre Dame, you know, has given up so far and you see what Georgia rushes for. I think Georgia is second in the country in yards uh yards per, per run. run. Like yards per, Yeah, yeah, yards per run. I think it's like 8 point something and so I mean Yeah, and, and they're they're and adjusted they're, and they're, and they're, and rushing yards. Their offensive yards line is just absurd. Yeah, they're off Yeah, you know, and their offensive line is like what they like outweigh Notre Dame's defensive line by like fifty pounds per person. I mean, like they could just <laughs> knock them. They could knock Notre Dame's front seven off the ball all night. Um, you know, it's, I think it could be one. Well, Notre Dame may put you know eight nine men in the box. Well, dude, if you put that many guys in the box, Fromm well, Jake Fromm will you. like Fromm you. will beat you. Oh, he yeah, will he will absolutely them. kill you. And and even if you do put eight nine men in the box, like I mean. Georgia, it's almost like the Alabama thing, and Alabama obviously had to run the ball as well this year. But like where they just they're still, they're so much bigger, dude. They just line up and they will move you back. And oh yeah, still get their yardage. I think my my favorite play of the week is um is probably I mean look the line's gone over fourteen and a half. I wouldn't be surprised if this line gets up to sixteen by kickoff. 
Georgia Notre Dame because there's so much money on Georgia. I think the play is Georgia minus seven and a half in the first half. Um, look, it's Saturday night in Athens. College game day's there for the first time since yeah, I mean, a long when, time. I think it was. I think it was when I think I heard what the Stanford Steve and the Bear were saying. I think it's since like. Zach Mettenberger was at LSU. Yeah, and Aaron and Murray. LSU it was like Georgia down there, 2011, I think, or 2012. Yeah, that's the last time. That's the last time they were in Athens. This is like the hottest ticket in the history of Georgia football. Um, tickets are going for like 300 to 400 dollars a piece just to get in the stadium. Oh, and that's, that's, that's cheap. Like the, yeah, right. <laughs> that's that's the that's cheap like seat. The, that's the cheap seat. So this isn't like when. Notre Dame played Georgia when they played in South Bend a couple of years ago and, you know, 35,000 Georgia fans invaded Notre Dame Stadium. Like, the Notre Dame fans, they ain't going to be 35,000 Notre Dame fans oh, no. invading Sanford Stadium. Like, that is that place is going to be – game day's there in the morning. The game is not until night. Like, that crowd – dude, they, Notre Dame is – not that they haven't before because, obviously, they play Clemson on a Saturday. I mean, Notre Dame plays a tough schedule every year. But, like, that is, a, that is going to be – you know, I remember I remember Vernon telling me the story. He went to an Alabama Florida game. Oh yeah, that, it was Duluth 2010 ever. with Urban Meyer and all that. It was it was Urban's last year. I remember that. Yeah, and and Vernon said he walked into the stadium and he called all of his buddies, his gambling buddies, or texted them, and he was like, "Put everything you have on Alabama. They are going. <laughs> this place is a freaking hornet's nest." And that's what I think Sanford Stadium is going to be Saturday night. And it is gonna, and it's a blackout. They're doing a blackout there. Like I think Georgia could very well be up like twenty-eight to seven at halftime, twenty-eight nothing at halftime. Like I think the thing could get out of hand soon. I also kind of like Georgia over thirty-five and a half points. Like I think Georgia's scoring in the forties in this game. Um, I I told you know, Chris the other day I really do believe that that Georgia may be the most complete team in the country. I, I think that they could no, win I, I, a national I, championship this year. No, and you can still get them 5-1 to one right now to win yeah. the national title, which that's not a crazy bet at all. You know, you 40 bucks to pay out 200 or something like that. If you want to put 100 on it to win five, I mean, whatever, you, whatever your budget is, you know, um, there's value there. There's also value on them right now. I think they're, I think they're still like plus 180 to win the SEC championship. Yeah, and, different I mean, books. I mean, like, you can get as much as, as plus 200. Right. And, like, I mean, you know they're going to win the East. So, I mean, they're there. So, it is, like, all they're going to have to win is that SEC title game, which is obviously easier said than done. We know we, their, their, their struggles with Alabama over the last couple of years, whether it's the national oh, yeah. title game or last year's SEC title game. It's been well documented. But, you, I mean, you as an Alabama fan, you know, I mean – Oh, this With this what? team has major problems on, on the and offensive and defensive and, line. Yeah, injuries too, and they're not running the ball as well. Um, now, I, know, I'll, I'll is, say this: everybody two jumped two on. Amazing. Yeah, oh, two is amazing. But I, I I will say that last week with everybody hopped on the they can't run the football, all that kind of mess. Um, if you go back and actually watch the game. I, Will Muschamp put six guys in the box and brought two more on almost every play. And yeah. what Saban and that bunch figured out early on was, okay, they're going to leave the middle of the field completely. And you saw slant after slant after slant. And it, they realized, okay, we don't have to run to win this football game. Like, But if, if yeah. they're not going to back guys off, then we're just going to keep passing it. And even into the fourth quarter, they continued it. And it was just. Is that because is, is that because slant after slant? Is that because you guys have like a freaking wide receiver and Jerry Judy who's like faster than Usain Bolt? <laughs> <laughs> that, that hey, you know, is, of those like, four wide receivers, like, he's the slowest human being. There's no way he is the slowest. Oh, I'm dead set. They talked There's... about it on, on the uh, on the TV broadcast. Uh, but it, but it's been known okay, was, in, in Alabama I circles. A, I was out at a bar. I was out at a bar. I had like multiple games going on. Yeah. Um. So I yeah I wasn't I wasn't hearing the broadcast. Well, no, no, no. I know what it was. It was uh, the Memphis game was going at the same time, and the bar had the sound for the Memphis game on. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. But it's he he runs um, like a uh, he runs a four four, and I believe it's uh let's see Henry Ruggs I think is the fastest, and he runs like a four two seven, and then the other two are in the four threes. 
like Jalen Waddell and uh, and Devonta Smith, like and that's ridiculous. Everybody on the team is just ridiculous fast. Jerry Judy is he's fast, but he's more of a, a quick. Like he will make you miss. Yeah. And he can he can hit a different gear. Um, and he can run some routes too. Yeah. Man, that guy's he can, he can really run his routes too, which is you know one of the most probably the most I mean obviously the most underrated thing about being a wide receiver is oh, how yes. good you are of a route runner. He's I know he is. He is without a doubt, man. That dude, that dude's gonna go top five in the NFL draft. There's no doubt about it, man. Oh, I, I can uh, believe it. He's a machine. But yeah, dude, we. I mean, we yeah, before we got off on our Alabama team, <laughs> Georgia. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm I'm with you. I think Georgia might be. I mean, just because like you you see like like you said the 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 struggles that Alabama has with the injuries they've had on defense, problems with the offensive line, um, and then Clemson, you know, the, the Trevor Lawrence has not been like he's not wowed anybody. Like five touchdowns, five picks, um, you know. Uh, and they're still like they, they, blowing they, people out. Like it's it's not. Yeah. But and they're putting up outrageous numbers. I mean, they put almost seven hundred yards up uh, against Syracuse. I mean, it's you know it, we're we're kind of nitpicking here. They just don't look as well oiled as usual. It, but they don't have to. Like they they don't play say, anybody. This, this is this is what cause, okay because here here's the thing. this this is what you can always this, this is why I think we both kind of feel this way about Georgia as opposed to say Clemson and Alabama although Alabama's is not because I, it, it's Alabama's is more because of injury. Um, Clemson looks like a team that's just like we know we can beat these teams at any point in the game. Georgia is playing like they're a team on a mission. Like they're on a mission. I agree with that. They know they know what's happened to them the previous couple of years. Um, and they are playing like they are on a mission. They've got a great leader in from. Um, obviously, you know, we know what the recruiting classes have been, so you know they're loaded all over the field. Um, and I, 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 it is it is a shame what happened to Dylan Moses and with the um, it was uh, the McMillan kid uh, who frankly from Memphis played at White in High School. Uh, it, you know, it's a shame what happened to those guys because. One of the things I, you know, you always, as you know, as an Alabama fan, like that linebacking core that Alabama usually has, that they usually throw out there, is like it is as vicious as anything you see in the country. There's no doubt about it. And you know, especially Moses, like that's, you know, that's that's kind of the guy you were expecting to be that your your leader on defense. You know, he's your highest rated defensive uh, NFL prospect. Well, yeah, I mean, he was the he's the quarterback draft. of the defense. Like he he called the plays right. for and, the and defense. You, Right, and not having him, you know, I, I I do wonder if that comes to, if that really comes to bite you. When do you, who do you guys play first, A and M or LSU? A uh, and M is in three weeks, four weeks. I think it's okay. three weeks. That, that's gonna that's gonna be an interesting one because A and M is. I mean, their defense. I mean, you can oh, look at it like, and it's like, dude, like. I mean, yeah, it's like the A and M got the, the the talk of the A and M game. A and M Clemson is that A and M, you know, Jimbo Fisher make those boosters happy, cover that spread, get that touchdown. Oh, hundred percent. Well, it's it's partly why I think that they're gonna that. they're gonna handle Auburn this weekend. Right, but I think the I think the story of that game is, dude, they held Clemson to twenty four points. Yeah, that defense is for real. And if you go back, because I, I I mean, I had a little bit on them against uh, not a ton, and their opener against Texas State, and like. I mean, they should have shut them out. I mean, Texas State got the backdoor touchdown with like 26 seconds left. Like, Which, depending on where you, you got know, the it, number, like it, it, you you either lost it or won it. And I pushed on it. Yeah. I pushed on it. Now you you got lucky because sure. there were some guys that uh, that got what was it like 34 and a half, I think, and and they lost yeah. by half a point on it. But it's it, Jimbo typically <laughs> covers at home. I mean, he is seven and one. As a uh, as a favorite at home, uh, it, uh, over the the final number, right? Um, yeah, I, but I, it, it, like he just covers at home. Like that's that's just what. It, and no, Mike Elko, he, the defensive coordinator, is the real deal. Like I I followed him since he was at Wake Forest, and I I could always win unders with Wake Forest. <laughs> like it, they would yeah. always they'd put up their numbers, but their defense was un freaking real when he was the defensive coordinator and obviously you see what's happened to that defense since um but his his protege is the guy clark lee up at notre dame 
And that's kind of what gave me a yeah. little bit of pause about that Georgia game. But, yeah, Mike Oko against Gus Malzahn with a freshman quarterback on his first road start, it, I'm all over Texas A&M. Yeah, and, and, yeah and, I, and I think that that's you – know, I was talking to one of my buddies about it because he – one of my buddies is not really that big on Kellen Mond, and I and I like Mond. I actually do like Mond a lot. Um, Mond is way better at home, and, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 yes, he is. <laughs> As are a lot of quarterbacks. A lot of players play yeah. better at home. But the, the other the other thing too, yeah, that home field advantage is real there. Oh that yeah, is a real home field advantage at, at uh, what is it, Kyle Field or whatever. It yeah, is. Kyle Field. Um, but, yeah, the twelfth man. Um, that is a real home field advantage at the two thirty CBS game. I agree with you both. This is what I thought. This is what I thought. The more and more the weeks gone on, is what I was talking to my buddy about today. I said, "This is my only thing with Auburn. How are they going to score?" Yeah, because Bo Nix can't throw the ball. They're just only completing like fifty two percent of his passes, fifty one percent of his passes. It's like it's even like I heard it was like it's even less when he's in the pocket. So if A and M is able to keep him in the pocket. And last year, what, Auburn only had like, what was it, like 19 or 20 rushing yards against A&M on like 20, 21 carries? Yeah. Like, it, it was if, a little bit different Gus circumstances. Malzahn can't run the ball. Yeah. It, it, was, it was a little bit different circumstances. It, the only reason being um, they, like one, their offensive line was a lot worse last year. Their offensive line is better this year. But... Texas A&M's defensive line. I mean, they had a couple of guys drafted. They had somebody else graduate. Like they, they lost some dudes. So they, they are really young in the front seven. But it has not mattered so far. Like it, it is, it's all scheme with them, and they've still got a ton of talent. Like I, I think that they, they know how to. And and on top of that, they got to be pissed off at the way that they lost that game last year. They were up twenty four to fourteen in the fourth quarter and gave up two touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, you know, on the planes and just, you know, yeah. completely crapped the game away. So yeah, it yeah. was it was it's bad. I think they got revenge on their minds. I like uh I like Mond in this spot. I like Jimbo. I like I like Elko. I like all of it. I like all of it. And I, I, I and then I think the other thing too is is I think Jimbo, you know, if you if you gave him the true serum, like he knows this is a must win for them. If oh, they're yes. going to be able to try to win eight or nine games because you still have Alabama, you still have LSU, and you still have Georgia on your schedule. Um, you got to get your home and wins. You already lost to Clemson. You've got to get your home wins. Um, I mean, look, I don't expect them to beat Alabama, but like, you know, you've got to get this one. You have to, and especially because I have them over seven and a half wins on the season. <laughs> so, so do I. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I re, yeah, and that was me just like being like, you know what, dude, I believe in Jimbo Fisher. I think he's a really good coach and I believe in Kellen Mond. Like, dude, they'll find a way to get eight wins, nine wins. Like, they'll, they'll just figure a way to get it. Like, it'll just happen. Um, oh, Chris, Chris had him going 10 and 2. against LSU again. Had him going 10 and 2. Woo! Yeah, he, he had him winning the SEC West this year. And, that, and okay, now well that, he he gets a little that, outlandish on his pick sometimes, but I hey was he smoking crack. It's a, he he goes out on a limb with teams that he really believes in, and yeah, I mean I've seen crazier things happen. Like college football has been so chalk for so long, you know he's an LSU guy, so for him to pick Texas A and M, he really had to be all in on it, and yeah, he was like, man, I think Kellen Mond is going to take a step forward. I don't think they beat Clemson on the road, but I think that they can get Alabama at home, and I think that they can get one of the other ones. I think they can get LSU or they can get Georgia, and I think they handle everybody else. And I said, yeah, I mean, I they, they do that. That if they is if they beat Auburn this weekend, I also kind of like I like the under in the game too, just because I think I mean Auburn's defensive line is I mean God, they're awesome. Yeah, they're um, pretty. They're pretty good. I mean, they're pretty stout. Like I kind of I like the under forty eight in the game, but I'm kind of with you on uh, I think I'm going to have a little bit on A&M minus three and a half, may buy it down to three. Um, and then I think I'm going to probably, all, I'm going to have A&M in a money line parlay too. Um, I'll probably have them in a money line parlay. I may have them. I've also working on a first half line parlay and I kind of like A&M minus two and a half in the first half. You know, only got to be about three at halftime. I think that's, I think they that's could do doable that for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's – as long as, like, to me, I look at a lot of these first-half lines and I'm like, man, 
The guy's like, all you got to do is be up by a field goal or be up by like a touchdown. All right. Like, <laughs> like, you can <laughs> like do that. Right, that like, sounds that, good. That, that, that's easy enough, you know. I'm not getting killed by a hook or anything. Uh, you know, that's a and a and all, but that's. I mean, I think that I think it's probably the game I'm most looking forward to on the day. I don't know. I also like Michigan Wisconsin a lot. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. I love Harbaugh, but. Um, well, that I, one, that one, we're but we're also, trying to figure I, out the teams, I also right? Think this, and this one, yeah, I also we're think also A&M trying to Auburn out. could be boring as hell. Yeah, yeah, I think A&M Auburn could just be boring as hell. I mean, it's like it very well could be twenty to thirteen. You know, like that could be the final <laughs> score, twenty three thirteen. Like that, that which like, which could again. I'm trying to. It could be super I'm entertaining. Trying to figure though. out how Auburn's going to score. No, it could be. It could be. It could be. It could be. It'll be the uh, the old school SEC football fans will love it. I am. Uh, so let's talk about old school SEC football, and I am super curious about your like your mentality towards or your philosophy towards a game like this and it's it's not huge on the board but Cal and Ole Miss it is I'm I'm looking at Vegas Insider it is uh Ole Miss minus 2 Ole Miss minus 2 and a half and Ole Miss minus 3 at multiple different books it it mm-hmm. opened as a pick 'em and then it quickly moved yeah. to Cal minus 1 and it has gone all Ole Miss uh, you've got over seventy percent of the bets on Ole Miss. It, the high is only supposed to be like eighty-eight in Oxford on Saturday. I, you know, wh- where do you lean on this? Like, it, is it because of a noontime kick? Do you think Ole Miss has a more, uh, like, more of an advantage, or like, I don't think Ole Miss is very good, and I think Cal no, can't score. I, but I, you know, I, what, what's your philosophy yeah, on this? I, uh, the the under. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't, I, I don't, uh, I, look, I mean, I'm not going to bet this game at all. I actually might take Ole Miss minus a half point in the first half. I might do that. Um, just because the first half you do have the West coast traveling to the East coast. It's going to be 9am on their body clocks when that game starts It's 11am yeah. time, central time. It's 11 a.m. where we're located, noon Eastern, 11 a.m. our time when that game starts. That's 9 o'clock Pacific on their body time, 9 a.m. Pacific. Um, like second no, half would be when Cal jumps back in this thing, if they do. Right. Well, and it's not like Ole Miss is going to be like 21 points ahead or anything. No. <laughs> like, no it's not, like, not, not it's at not all. Like they're gonna have to, yeah, right. It's not like they're going to have to like battle back a ton. Um, but I think, yeah, that I kind of do, I kind of do like Ole Miss minus that half point in the first half, just cause I could see Cal starting off kind of slow. It also, I mean, it's also kind of an interesting matchup because of the coaches, you know, oh, yeah. uh, the, the Cal coach. And then you, the fact you have the coordinators for Ole Miss of both the two Pac-12 guys coached against them in the Pac-12. Yeah. Rich Rod and Mike McIntyre, um, and so, I mean, I, I think that's what makes it an interesting matchup. Well, I mean, I, I'm not going to – I'm probably not – I'm not going to – probably not betting this game at all. If I do, it'll be that I'll have Ole Miss in, in a first half – in one of my – in my first half parlay. Like, and I'll just bet the – you know, because it's going to be like a $5 first half parlay that pays out like something <laughs> absurd. So the odds that it hits are ridiculous, but it's going to be for five – it's only going to be five bucks or whatever – you know, it's like five bucks with a chance to win like three grand or something. So it's, the odds of it hitting are going to be very slim, but it's just, it's five bucks. So it's, yeah. it's worth taking a shot on it. Um, I, I mean, I, I'll do that, but like, I don't, I mean, I, the reason I'm saying, I would, I, I would take Cal if the game was in the afternoon, but because it is that, or if, if it was like a two o'clock kick, which would be noon on their body time, be fine. But the fact that it is 9 a.m. on their body clocks, like, dude, that stuff matters, man. Like, I can't tell you, man, like, when, I, when I've gone out to the Pacific time zone. Oh, like, it changes everything. It does, man. Like, it yeah. absolutely changes everything. It, like, I've gone, I've gone out there, and I'm like, man, it's only like, you know, it's like o'clock. nine o'clock. It's, like, what are, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like, or it's like seven o'clock, and it's like, 
damn, it's 9 o'clock back in Memphis. And then it gets to be like, man, it's only midnight here, but it's like 2 a.m. in Memphis. And next thing you know, it's like, I mean, it does, man. It And when you get back, it takes, I mean, it takes, like, it took my body a couple days. Uh, this, you know, uh, here, I'll, I'll tell you, Central Time Zone. I'll tell you what I did this summer. I So we went and spent a week in San Francisco. And right. of course, everything, because we're out with my wife's buddies and whatnot, and they stay up super late all the time. So we were up until, you know, at least midnight every night, and I was exhausted for the first couple of days. And then, like, my body yeah. adjusted to it, and then we came back, and I was home for a day, and then I went to Atlanta for, like, two, three days. And, of course, that's East Coast time. <laughs> so yeah. my body was completely shot by the time I ended up actually coming back and staying in Memphis. I mean, it's just, it's a completely different thing. And when you're only doing it for a couple of days... And you've got to get up and, and be ready by 9 a.m. I mean, it is like normally for 11 a.m. kicks, those kids have to be up by like 7 a.m., which for them yeah. would be 5 a.m. And, and it's you're not used to it. So, yeah, I, I, right. could, I could see where first half definitely I I went with Cal on it because I, I just I, think they are such a better football team than Ole Miss. Like that, I think they're a better football team. I think they're a better coach football team. I think you know Matt Luke is a dead man walking. I heard you. I heard you say that you know if Arkansas would have had Starkle in that game from the very beginning, that they beat Ole Miss. That you yes. think they beat Ole Miss, and I probably agree with you. And you know, I'm not, they could I'm have lost Houston, last but, week to Southeast Louisiana. Like that was not out of the realm of possibility. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they could have. 100%. 100% they could have. I mean, Arkansas could have lost to Colorado State. They were tied going into yeah, the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's yeah. true. And then they Still hung 55 on them. They, they got me the cover. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm with you. So uh, that's why I, so I'm debating it this week. I'm like, well, maybe they finally clicked onto something with Starkle. Um, by the way, my biggest preseason bet was the Arkansas under five and a half win. I still don't see how they win an SEC game, though. Um, so I do think that my under on that will hit. But, like, I, I do think – Ark. I'm kind of thinking – dude, Tulsa kind of handled San Jose State pretty easy. I San Jose like State Arkansas is minus, Dude, I, it, I, Arkansas minus 11 and a half in the first half. Oh, yeah. And it's it's 21 for the game, So which I thought it would go I, over dude, 21. I I saw it at 20 and a half a few minutes ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a couple of lines where it's uh, where it's 20 and a half. It got bought back down. So, but San, I'm telling you, San Jose State is so bad. Like, this yeah. team is just awful. And it's it's not it's not totally their fault. It That administration puts no money into that program whatsoever. It's uh, Remember, Tom Bowen was there uh, before he came to Memphis. Yeah. And he had he built that hired, place up. Uh, McIntyre. He hired is McIntyre. Yeah. yeah. He hired Mike Mack, who's now the, now the defensive coordinator at Ole Miss. Yeah. Exactly. No, he, yeah. He's the one who hired, who, who was, uh, what, one of Cutcliffe's coordinators at, uh, at Duke. Yeah. So uh, yeah. now Bowen understood to, uh, yeah. it, how to build a, a football program and, and make it run. But ever since then, that administration does not give a crap about that football program, and it shows on the field. They uh they are one and one right now. They did have an off week last week, um, but they got beat two weeks ago by Tulsa, thirty four to sixteen, and they beat Northern Colorado, thirty five to eighteen. And the under and uh, they, they've lost against the spread both times. So like they're uh they're not looking so good so far. And I I thought they would be really bad. The only issue is like, man, Arkansas like they're still not a good football team. And that's a huge number. I know they beat Colorado State by 21, but yeah. I mean it, it took them 55 points to get there. So, right. And I, well, that's I do. That's why I do kind of like the 11 and a half in the first half. But again, like the other thing that worries you about that is the Colorado State thing. It took them to the fourth quarter. Yeah, to really know? get rolling. Like, yeah, right. Like I, I need I need them to be rolling early if I'm going to do 11 and a half in the first half. But I mean, it feels like they could be up 28 to nothing at halftime or 28. But I don't know. Probably won't be twenty eight nothing. They will give up points. Yeah, they'll, they'll definitely give up points. points. Yeah, so. they, they will. They will. They will give up points. There's no doubt about that. Well, let's uh, let's talk about some picks that you got. What uh, what do you like in college football besides what you've already given us? 
Yeah, so what? I've given you Georgia minus seven and a half in the first half. In the first half. half. Yep. Um, yeah, I like that one. Um, and then, you, mean, you were leaning still... the over in uh, in Oklahoma State and Texas, but I, you weren't. You hadn't decided yeah, if you're going to play I it. Don't, I don't know if I'm going to If I do play it, it'll be very small. The Georgia first half minus seven and a half, I'll probably play a little more. I'm not going to, it's not going to be like an Ohio State, Indiana play. It ain't going to be that. I'm not going to play anything like I did that in the Oklahoma State Tulsa game. Nothing's going to be that big this week because I don't love them enough. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd also, I'd, I'd, I'd do, I'd do Georgia minus 14 and a half right now. I'd buy it to 14. I'd buy it, to, I'd, I'd buy it to 14 and take the minus 120 and did, did make it minus 120 and do that. Um, so at least if Notre Dame, that Notre Dame, the back door worries me with Notre Dame. That does worry me with them um, if it gets late. But I, I actually, I mean, I, I, I said today on Twitter, uh, I was at Jim Dunaway out of Birmingham, a buddy down there, a host a radio show on WJOX. Um, he wanted predictions for the Georgia game, and I told him, uh, I told him, uh, I like Georgia to win forty-five to twenty. Yeah, um, I mean that's that sounds reasonable. So I, yeah, and 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 I think it's more of like a forty-five to thirteen. I think it's probably forty-five to thirteen, and then you know Notre Dame gets a late touchdown. Um, and so yeah, that's sorry, dude, dude. A freaking cop just drove down my street and pulled into my driveway <laughs> and it freaked me. I was like, what in the world, dude? Well, dude, I live in I live in a I live in a dead end, and I'm like pulled all the way up in my driveway, but it. This happens all the time. These cars think they can like get through a shortcut and avoid Poplar Avenue, and they fly down my street, and then they realize it's a dead end. It, it's a dead and end. They have to yep. back into my driveway and then go back out the other way. But that just like <laughs> freaked me out for a second. I got distracted. But yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, Georgia. Um, I, yeah, I, I do. I mean, I also like. Um, I saw that UCF line went down to eleven. I mean, I think it, it, to me, it's like it, it, it is a weird line. It is weird because they beat them forty-five to fourteen last year. Here's what worries me, though. Um, look, Stanford sucks. Yes, like they just, they suck. Like I, I'm not impressed by the USC win. Like like by USC beating the crap out of them because Stanford sucks, and that's what I thought going into the last week. And I'm I kick myself for not betting the game at all. I got scared off when the line got too far into double digits, but. I mean, I was Pitt the same way. Within, like I, Pitt I, was right there with Penn State. Pitt was right, and if Pat Narduzzi wasn't a moron, they could have won the game. Beaten Penn. They could have won the game if Pat Narduzzi wasn't a moron. So, like, I, I mean, I'm like, okay, is Penn State amazing? No, but Penn State's a top twenty team in the country, and Pitt was right there with them. So, well, and so the metrics the road, uh, that I that I normally come up with at the the average spread on that game is like at UCF minus seven and a half. Like it, it's right. it's not just ridiculous. And against Stanford, it was like, I mean, it was a massive, massive difference. So the analytics like Pitt more this week than they liked Stanford last week. Now Stanford, of course, because of the name and because you're used to David Shaw covering, that's one thing. But like Pat Narduzzi ain't bad as a as a home dog either. So no, it's no, it's 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 one. It's it's also one of those things to me. Like I, I, I think if you do bet UCF, you you're not gonna it, look and you lose it. Don't feel stupid because UCF literally they like they've been a covering machine and they literally have kicked the crap out of everybody they play. So like if if they do it and they don't cover. It don't you don't feel dumb about making the bet because they have kicked the crap out of everyone they play. They did beat this team forty five to fourteen last year, so I mean it's it's possible. Um, Washington State minus ten and a half in the first half against yeah, UCLA. I do like, like that. Why one. would they not like? Why will they not be up twenty eight to seven at halftime? I no, like, why will they not be me? up twenty eight to seven at halftime? Like I. It's, UCLA the only, is the only awful. Thing I can think of. Absolutely yeah, awful. I mean, Yards per are. play on defense and on offense, they are uh, one of the three worst in the country. And and I will tell you this: something underrated. 
Washington State's defense is – you, you, when you think Washington State and you think Mike Leach, you just think the air raid offense and they're scoring 60 points a game. Their defense is not, like, god-awful. They no, turn you over. defense is pretty good. It, it is. They, they were good last year. They had a good defense last year. They turned, they turned teams over like crazy last year. And they're pretty good this year. Like, they did a good job against Houston last week. So their, their defensive you know, coordinator, I, they had Alex Grinch, right, who went to Ohio State yeah. and then – Went to Oklahoma, right. and everybody thought that it would kind of fall apart, dude. They've got a uh, they've got Tracy Clays, who used to be the Minnesota head coach, and and he was the one that mm-hmm. ended up getting fired because he sided with his players. You know, when the school suspended some of them, all that kind of mess, right? Now yeah. he was looking for a gig, and Leach was like, "All right, like you can come in here. Nobody cares what we do here. Like it, <laughs> it doesn't matter." So all the political crap that went on at Minnesota didn't matter in uh, in the Palouse. So. Yeah, Leach brought him in, and that defense has not missed a beat. Like, they, obviously, they're not going to be a top ten defense in the country because of the air raid, right? But, but they are they are legit. Like, that is a legit football team. I agree. And UCLA is like awful on offense, which is so weird. I know every we say it every week. Why is Chip Kelly's offense so bad? Um, but they just are, and I I don't see how UCLA is really gonna do I mean like they couldn't do anything against Oklahoma's defense last week in the first half like Washington State's defense is better than Oklahoma's yeah or at least it, I, to me it seems like it is uh, yeah Washington State I mean if you want to take a minus eight that line it, what's weird is that line went from 19 and a half to 18 and a half that is weird uh um, well that, I'll that, tell that, you this there's a there's actually money on UCLA which which is still weird right like it, that makes it, the reason so being to me the reason why that is is because the road team in this series uh, has covered five of the last six. Uh, underdog always does well. Uh, the road team always does well uh, in covering on the road in this series for whatever reason. And it, but UCLA is so bad. Like I think maybe just toss the trends out, you know? Because it, it's that's yeah. That's that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. I'm like again. See, I, I try to look at these bets, and it's like. What I put money on, I'm like, okay, even if this doesn't hit, I don't feel stupid for making the bet. Exactly. Like one, like one of my buddies was like, it texted me today about Florida State Louisville. And I'm like, dude, I, uh, I don't hey, oh, know. I'm, I'm staying away from that. And once it got under yeah. seven and a half, like it, I was, I was done with well, it. Well, and I'm just, I'm just like, dude, I am not, like, I'm not betting on Florida State. No, because like, I have if, no if, idea if what they're going to do. You bet on Florida State and they don't cover. It's like you should just hit yourself. Like just punch yourself, man. Like, yeah. you, think, you know better. You you know better. You know better. But like again, if I take Washington State minus ten and a half in the first half and it somehow doesn't cover, I'm not gonna feel stupid about making that bet. Like, dude, UCLA sucks. Mike Leach is awesome. The end. Here's uh, a you know, like, so let let me tell you. You know, when, when you know which way a line is going and it's going the opposite way, we, we talked about this, uh, I think, before we started recording, about the Tulane and Houston game, right? And how yeah. when a line is moving the opposite direction, you know that Vegas wants everybody to bet. So we, we knew Vegas wanted everybody to bet on Houston because they had like 77% of the tickets and like 80% of the money. And it was all on Houston. And the line kept going up. It opened at two and a half on Tulane and then moved its way up and it ended at like four and a half. It got up to like five, five and a half. They pulled yeah. it back down a little bit, but still everybody was on Houston. Dude, Tulane goes down, kicks a field goal to make it 31 to 28 with like four minutes left. Houston goes down the field, kicks a field goal with 21 seconds left to make it 31 31. Tulane scored in 19 seconds in two plays. And and won thirty eight to thirty one, <laughs> like and gets the cover. Wow! So just ridiculous, wow. right? Like I, I don't I don't think there's shenanigans going on, but it's just like you got to be kidding me, right? You know? <laughs> that, 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 oh, that's nuts, man! That's nuts. You know, I saw. Yeah, it's like when stuff like that happens, it's like okay, you got to pause and you got to know, and it's like somebody knows something there. Yeah. Somebody knows. It's just like when you see on like an NFL Sunday, you know, uh, Vernon and Chris texted me last, last Sunday morning. And obviously I was home, was not able to drive down to Dunica. 
because I would have, but he texted me and he said, yo, Darren Rebell just put up a tweet and said, some better just walked into one of the sports books in Vegas and put $55,000 on the San Francisco 49ers to cover, you know, one and a half against the Bengals. Yep. He goes, so I think that means good things to the 49ers today. Somebody knows something, you know, yeah. if you're doing it that close to kickoff, somebody knows something and they've probably been holding that bet all, all week long that they knew something. And sure enough, the 49ers beat the living hell out of the Bengals. Um, you know, I another one, I, Oregon. If we're, since I told you how much I think, I just think Stanford's not good. Yeah, Oregon, this is the the fade Stanford year, right? Yeah, it's just fade Stanford. That's all that is. It's not. I mean, Oregon's good too. I mean, they're a good team. They're not. I don't think they're like amazing or anything. No, um, I mean, look, you, the USC like lost, and UCF. They, they should have beaten Auburn. They should have beaten Auburn, but. They lost yeah. to Auburn, and I don't think Auburn's great either. Auburn's a good team. I think Auburn's a good team. Uh, just like I think Oregon's a good team. Um, I think this is about Stanford's just bad. Yes, 100%. Like, here's here's what I was saying. USC and UCF both have way more wide receiver talent, but Oregon has the better quarterback than either yeah. of those teams, and I think that he's going to be able to pick them apart. Like, I think they will hit – I don't – they had good enough players to destroy Nevada. They had good enough players to be able to hit some big plays against Auburn. Oregon, right. sec- I mean, uh, uh, Stanford secondary is putrid. I mean, they are really, really like yeah. astronomically bad. And oh no, I can see I can, Oregon. I can see Oregon winning this game like fifty-two to seventeen or something. Like I, I mean, it's well, especially after Oregon the way that they lost it last year, right? Right, right, exactly. So, I mean, that's that's one. Um, it, have, here's one: Old Dominion. Oh, I love this bet. I love this bet. Old Dominion, but you can get it at twenty eight and a half or twenty nine. Yeah, it, it, it'll probably go down more because I know one of the pro gamblers uh, gave it out on a podcast. One of the professional gamblers he gave it out as his as his best bet, and it's because I think that was the bet the board podcast, up. wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was better yeah. than board. It was Payne Insider, and it's Virginia coming off the Florida State game. They got Notre they got Dame Notre next Dame week. Next, yep. Notre Dame next week, and then what? Don't they have Clemson right after that? Maybe. It, uh, it's not, either way, it's, no. It's, Clemson doesn't play Miami, Virginia. It's Miami. Yeah. No, that's it's it. Miami. It's Miami. It's Miami. Yeah. Yeah. But either way, your sandwich or that Old Dominion game is sandwiched between Florida State and Notre Dame, and Old Dominion has had a week off. And so, and Bryce and Perkins, of too. course. Dealing with an injury, so at Bryce Perkins, you're not going to run him as much as usual. You want him healed up for exactly. uh, for next week. So this yeah, I like that. Also brings me to another one. This also brings me to another one. Old Dominion plus seventeen in the first half. Huh. I had not thought about that. I mean, I, because you've got a team who's banged up from playing Florida State last week against a team coming in there in Old Dominion who's had two weeks. Two weeks to get ready. They're going to be fresh. They're going to be fired up. I could see Old Dominion putting up 10 to 14 points in the first half, you know? I could see that happening. Yeah, I could see like a 21 to 10 halftime score. I mean, Virginia doesn't exactly right. get off to like fast starts. Yeah, and, Virginia's, and Virginia's scoring 21 points and a half is like a miracle if that happens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, they, they don't exactly play that way. They don't exactly Virginia, Bronco Mendenhall style. Um, anything? Okay, here. I'm going to just go. Uh, I, I I'm not gonna play it because I'm not gonna go down there uh, to be able to play it. Utah minus three and a half against USC. Like I don't yeah. I don't I'm not it, dude. It's it's Kyle Whittingham against Clay Helton. Like what are we talking about here? The only reason I'd stay away from it is because it's USC and like I don't know if USC is gonna score 17 points or they're gonna score 47 points. Now I'd like to think they're playing Utah and Kyle Whittingham. Yeah. They're not gonna score 47 points. You're, you're not gonna them. score that many. Um, I'd lean towards they they score seventeen in this game rather than they score forty seven uh, against Utah. I think they but confuse the hell out of out of Slovis. They they get some picks fr- and yeah. It's it, but it's yeah no I I can see it but they only, it's a Friday night. Reggie Bush is going to be back in the stadium because he's working the game as an analyst for Fox. Their next their future head coach Urban Meyer is also going to be in the stadium working for Fox. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think when that they're Utah, going to show out for you know, this. Like at, when when you, when Utah beats the crap out of them, how quickly 
do they fire Clay Hilton and hire Urban Meyer? Does Urban Meyer even get to leave Los Angeles Friday night? Oh, well, I mean, he's going to be there for the rest of the season anyway because he works for Fox. Right. He's, he's 10 minutes down the road. That's, no, they, they don't fire true. Clay. They, they fire Clay after the Notre Dame game. Like they, the they get, game. Yeah, they get midway through. The, and what they may do, because they still need to hire an athletic director, they're just going to wait until the end of the year and actually do it right for the first time in, it, it, since before Pete Carroll. Like it, it, they'll just have, they'll just have yeah. Urban be both. I, I could see that. He'll be there. He'll, <laughs> he'll be the AD and, and the coach. coach. But we're back in the uh, the sixties and seventies now. They'll just have Urban Meyer do both. Um, okay, here's another one I'm going to do just because I told you I've watched this team more than any other in college football this year. I'm gonna. I'm probably going to play this. I'll probably parlay it too. Just I'll do a small parlay. I ain't going to bet a ton on it. Like I said, I'm not betting a ton on any of these games. Um, like it's it's I not a great slate for it. Like it's I legit had over I legit had a hundred dollars or a little over a hundred dollars on Ohio State and Oklahoma State last week. I'm not doing that at all with any of these games. Probably the biggest bet I make, it probably won't even be half of that. Um, because that like I just don't have the confidence in these. So but I prop Ohio State minus twenty four and a half in the first half and Ohio State minus 38 and a half for the game uh, against Miami of Ohio. Here's the thing. Ohio State has covered all three first half lines this year, Florida Atlantic, Cincinnati, and then Indiana last week. Ohio State has scored 28, 28, and 30 points in all in their first halves. Indiana scored a touchdown against them last week. It was 30 to 10 at halftime. So obviously that would not cover 24 and a half in this game. It would have covered the first half spread last week though. Yeah. Um, which I think was like 13 and a half or something or 14. Or, I don't know, no, against like Indiana, it was like, it was 10 and a half. Yeah. Yeah. It was like 10 and a half. So, so easily would have covered that. This one's 24 and a half. So obviously a 30 to 10 wouldn't cover this. The only way Indiana got that touchdown was running a trick play at the end of the, towards the end of the first half. That's the only reason they got a touchdown. So, I know Ohio State is scoring between 28 and 35 points in the first half. I know that's happening. I've watched them play every week. They're going to do that. The question is, does Miami of Ohio get a touchdown in the first half? I would venture to say no, and the reason being, I watched. I I went and watched them against Cincy, and they are they they cannot throw the football. They've got a freshman quarterback. They that's. That's a really bad offense. They've got a pretty good defense. I don't think they've got near the horses to be able to hold up with with Ohio State. I, I think I like that first half. De- their, de- their defense is not stopping Ohio State. Trust no. me on that. <laughs> they are not stopping Ohio State. Like, dude, I, I, and so like I, this is kind of why I say why I'm doing this because Ohio State has, whether it's been the first half minus seventeen against Florida Atlantic that hit or the over in the Florida Atlantic Ohio state game that hit or the first half line in the Cincinnati game for me that hit or the, uh, the, the minus 15 and a half in the Indiana game that hit, they have covered all three of their first half line lines so far. Ohio state has. Yeah. So they finally have put, put the line at 24 and a half and. But they did it against the team that can't Ohio score. State. <laughs> against the team that can't score. I, I mean, I think Ohio State's up 28 nothing at halftime, 31 to nothing, 35 to nothing, 35 to 3, 28 to 3 at halftime. Like, I just, yeah. Like, I'll roll with Ohio yeah. State. Another one that has also, I bet on them twice on the two games I could. The other one, I couldn't do it because the, they, the casino, the tuna casinos, you can't do it. You can't bet against the, F, the FCS games. They don't have those listed. Um, but Coastal Carolina has covered their two first half lines I was able to bet on against Eastern Michigan and Kansas. Coastal Carolina is minus nine and a half in their first half this week against, uh, I believe it's UMass. Uh, so you'll, you'll that, be able to bet. You know I UMass is, a, uh, is an FBS team. So, yeah, you'll be no, able no, to no, bet I that. Mean, F- no, no, no. I can bet that. I'm saying like they played like Norfolk oh, State or something. Coastal yeah, Carolina okay. The previous week. Yeah, couldn't <laughs> I thought bet you were saying one. you couldn't bet no, no, this no, one. I can bet. <laughs> No, no, no. I can bet this one. I'm saying the only reason I didn't the Norfolk State when I wasn't able to bet, but I did bet the Eastern their, their game against Eastern Michigan had Coastal Carolina yep. in the first half, and I bet their first half against uh, Kansas. And of course, they they won outright against Kansas, but they covered the first half against Kansas too. Um, the only thing that worries me about that is I've kind of looked at UMass's games, and like UMass when they score, they do they kind of do their scoring in the first half. 
Yeah. It's kind of when they do their scoring, and then they don't score at all in the second half. So that's why I'm kind of, eh. But maybe Coastal Carolina minus 16 and a half. Like, UMass sucks. Oh, they are <laughs> they are the worst team in FBS, and it's not even close. It's oh, a, I like uh, – I heard you talk about Troy on your pod. Um, yeah, Akron is awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can get Troy. So Troy, I love getting out first half lines. I'm just going to be called Johnny first half from now on. Uh, <laughs> Troy's first half line is like minus ten. Yeah, I'm like, why are they not going to be up twenty one to three at halftime? Like, why are they not going to be up that much? That's like, a, the only like, the only I reason mean, I would worry about that first half is because it is in Akron, and I I I mean Akron needs something good to happen, but I. I just don't see it. Like, Troy's offense is... It, so, on the other side of this, Troy's running back is uh, is out yeah. for the season, and he was like an, an all uh, Sunbelt, you know, conference offense player of the year, uh, candidate, all that kind of mess. But uh, he had not done like a ton in the first few games anyway. And, you know, like it, most of this is Caleb Barker, their quarterback. Like, that's, that's who's going to be generating the points here. And... I think it continues because Akron's defense is awful and they can't score. Like it, the only scoring that they have done is in garbage time, but it it hasn't been enough. Like they hadn't covered all year, so like I I really like Troy here because they are they put up points with the best of them. Like it, it, Chip Chip Lindsey is uh, is the former offensive coordinator under Malzahn, but he had yeah. to call Malzahn's offense. And now he's wanting to get out and actually do his thing. I mean, they're averaging like 43 and a half points. So I, I'm all in on on Troy. I think they're going to wipe the floor with him. I mean, Akron is god awful. Hey, I, don't don't Akron and UMass play like next week or something? Oh, that's a good question. God, that'd be a terrible game to bet, wouldn't it? <laughs> I thought I heard that on another pod that Akron and UMass play next week. And I'm like, oh, my God. I bet Man, it's on ESPN Plus, the, and I want to watch it. The, the, the suck bowl. Man, like that is. They play. I, 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 yes, next Saturday. Is next Saturday Akron and UMass? <laughs> oh man, get your popcorn ready for that one. Good gracious, Akron and UMass. Uh, I kind of like. The only thing that bothers me is it's an 11 a.m. game Central Time, LSU. That's the only thing that bothers me is because it's so early, and I can see them just getting out kind of sluggish at the beginning. But uh, you you could you could I, see that, but I, man, I'm telling you, uh, Vanderbilt number one twenty six in the country in in passing defense, like at efficiency, right? Like they oh, are wow. awful against the pass this year. Yeah, I yeah I did the twenty four right now. I'd probably buy the half and make it twenty three and a half, just to help yourself out, you know. Yeah, and just to help yourself out. In case LSU just decides to win the game thirty-one to seven, you know, and not care, they should obviously score more than thirty-one. No, this, this would be the case, you never perfect, know. This would be the perfect time for them to actually run the score up, and because if they're wanting to actually put Joe Burrow in the Heisman discussion, this would be the week to do it. You got him on at eleven a.m. The highlights are going to be run on every broadcast for the rest of the day. Like, this would be the time, especially against this defense. Like, I could see him putting up 500-some-odd points or 500-something yards this week. Yeah. Like, I, I really think that, that they I, would run I, the score up. Yeah, I, I do I do like LSU in this spot, and I hate betting on LSU. I just, I mean, like, because it's Orgeron, and I I still don't trust the guy. But I know. At what point are we ever going to get mean, over that? <laughs> like, no, I, well, to me, it's not even that. I will say what he's great at is he's pretty good at making hires, and – that is the best hire, and I don't think there's any doubt about it, the all season in college football was his hiring of Joe Brady oh, yes. from the New Orleans Saints to run their passing game at LSU. He was the, well, he was the, what, the passing game coordinator for the Saints. Yeah. Hiring him away, and Sean, apparently Sean Payton was not happy about that either, but they're hiring, hiring away Joe Brady to run the passing game, for uh, to, to coach Joe Burrow and run that passing game at Ole Miss. That, that has been, or run the, at LSU has been, that's been the best hire in college football. When you look at what LSU was able to do with Texas, I mean, it's like how they were just able to sling the ball. It's like this is I've this is what we've been waiting for like eight years from LSU. We've yes. been waiting for this. Like we know the talent they have. They got. We look up here on NFL Sundays and we're like, 
wait, that receiver went to LSU, that receiver went to LSU, that receiver went to – like, why Why can't they throw the ball? <laughs> like, I mean, they've got all these <laughs> awesome receivers. Why can't why – can't, I mean, they've got freaking Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham Jr. and now they're on the same team in the they've, NFL. And you're like, yeah. why, why – They've always like, had it like that. It's I quarterbacks. I don't remember one Odell Beckham play from college. Not no. one. Well, because like, they, they didn't throw. I mean, he LSU. Is the most amazing receiver in the NFL. LSU I mean, historically has run the ball over 60% of the time. Like, that was Les Miles. That was Nick Saban. That was, we got bigger guys than you. With, you know, it, and, it, and it goes back to the Bear Bryant mentality of there's only three things that can happen when you throw the football. And two of them are bad, right? So yeah. you you got a better chance of doing something when you got bigger guys on the line and you got a better running back. So yep. they just but they just kept it for way too long. Like football got way past them. It innovated and went past the LSU mindset. And eventually, like Ed Orgeron is doing the the Dabo Sweeney thing. Like he's he's the CEO and he is the rah rah guy. But he's letting the other guys coach him, and it has worked out brilliantly with that bunch. No, it's it's it, it, he's done great. He's done he's done a great job, and I think it's great. Like you got to be humble enough as a head coach, you know, sometimes to be hands off and just step away and say, "I'm gonna let the I'm gonna hire these guys, and I'm gonna let them do what they do." Yeah, and that's gonna make it successful. And I'm just gonna kind of oversee everything. And he's look, you got to give him props for it. The, the guy has come a long way since Ole Miss. And even USC, and so no, you got to give them credit for it. And I mean, we know they've got the talent. Um, one other one, I'd say Northwestern. Yeah, I mean, just it feels like too many points. It just feels like too many points. Like, yeah, you, it's a hundred percent. It's at nine Michigan right State now. Beat? Yeah, like who is it was nine and a half earlier. Yeah, who it is, was. Who is Michigan State? Who is Michigan State beating by double digits in the Big Ten? That's like not named Rutgers. Uh, but and see, Chris brought that up, but like they only beat Rutgers by three last year. So <laughs> what in the world? Yeah. They, okay. Their Mark offense D'Antonio was really bad. To be fi- okay. Mark D'Antonio should have been fired on principle just for that. You, you only beat Rutgers by three. You should get fired. Well, and they, they lost to Nebraska last year, nine to six. So, you know, it, I, I thought that he would make some actual legitimate changes uh, yeah, on yeah. offense, but all, all he did was like, shit, like readjust the staff, just give everybody different no, titles. They, they, the, the, the only thing that scares me is like a Michigan State could win the game ten to nothing. Like, yeah, like, like that could happen. Like Northwestern can't score either. Well, North, Northwestern I mean, has won guy. three straight against Michigan State, and yeah, I mean they're they're what twelve one and one in their last fourteen as an underdog, and and the only here, one was uh was against Stanford at the beginning of the year, and that was just a yeah. Fluke, here's what, you know. this 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 is what worries me. This is honestly what worries me. They lost to Stanford. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, you can't lose to Stanford this year. I, I, I watched that game. It was the opener. That was, was the opener. I'll give them a pass because it was the opener. When they had to go across the country, and they there was there was just some weird stuff with that. And honestly, like, Stanford lost to a terrible Northwestern team. A couple of years ago, in the season opener, and then ended up twelve and two. And Northwestern has done this before, where they—I mean, hell, Northwestern lost to Akron last year at home, and won yeah. the Big Ten West. So, like, it's Northwestern gets up for their Big Ten games. Which, by the way, that's another big thing. They—you realize that Pat Fitzgerald is on a twelve-game Big Ten winning streak in the regular season, or yeah, Big Ten winning streak in the regular season. Like, aside from the championship wow. game last year, he has won 12 straight Big Ten games. Wow. Like, yeah. It, they're, they're legit, and they don't get respect for it. <laughs> no, I, they, hey, I love Northwestern, man. I love Northwestern. I, yeah, I'll roll with Northwestern. Oh, no, here it is. I forgot. I just remembered it because you also loved it, and you made it one of your picks. Um, I saw it at seven now. But I'll buy it up to seven and a half. Colorado. Oh yeah. I don't see how nor I don't see how Arizona State beats them by more than a touchdown. I just I don't like coming off that game. That's I mean that that Michigan State game. I will say this: boring as hell. But you know when you play Michigan State, you're going to get beat up. Like they're going to play physical. 
Like, yeah. That's how Mark D'Antonio likes to play. So you know Arizona – and Arizona State plays the same way. Um, and I like the quarterback. I like the Montez kid, man. The Montez kid's pretty good. Um, you know, whether I watched him explode in the uh, in the fourth quarter against – Against Nebraska, Nebraska or um, yeah, or just you know how they you know exploded against Colorado State, like that, like that, that kid's pretty good. Um, well, K- and Katie Nixon I, yeah. and Lavisca Chenault and and all they've got a ton of weapons. Like I think I think they will be able to put up some points. And Arizona State has not been able to put up points against really yeah, Colorado, anybody. Yeah, Colorado, yeah, Colorado's defense is not great. Um, but yeah, like Arizona State is not exactly a juggernaut on offense. They don't exactly like it's not like they're out here running the air raid. You know, yeah. they're not <laughs> they're not out here. They're not they're not. Herb Edwards ain't doing anything fancy. No, uh, not at all. Like he's he's going to run yeah. the ball, which means he's going to shorten the game, and the same thing will happen. You know, I I think yeah. at most it is a touchdown game, and that's you're you're right to buy that point. Like I got it at eight. Uh, seven and a half is a, a good spot. Even if you just wanted to do seven and, and if you end up pushing, then so be it. But I, like, this could be a field goal game easily. Like, I think people are oh, way too hyped on, on Arizona state right now because the same crap happened last year. Right. I mean, it just right. you get way too hyped on them. And then Arizona state went out after the win over Michigan state last year and then lost to San Diego state the next week by a touchdown. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's, and again, it's not like they don't they don't do anything fancy. Yeah. Um, you know, you're not playing Alabama. You're playing Arizona State. Like it's that they're not. Uh, it's, yeah, it's Herm Edwards ain't doing anything. He's not reinventing the wheel. Um, and I think I think the Colorado team's pretty good. Like I do. I think they are. I think they're pretty good. And I think this could be. I think this absolutely could be a letdown spot uh, for Arizona State. Um, was there any? Oh, we haven't. So we didn't talk about this. I know, man. We've been running a long time. Here. Yeah, we're we're uh, running we over an hour. We'll have to we, we'll have to wrap up here in just yeah. a little bit, anyway. <laughs> yeah, uh, we hadn't even gotten to anything in the NFL either. Um, we because we haven't talked about Wisconsin, Michigan. It's one we we talked a little bit, but uh, but yeah, it's it, I, I expected more money on Michigan, uh, with it being three and a half, and I mean, I just looked it up, and and there's still nearly seventy percent of the bets are on Wisconsin. Like I think because of that, I, I kind of like Wisconsin, or I, I kind of like Michigan. Like I, well, I'm, the, the line hasn't gone up either. Yeah, I thought they probably would have gotten pushed up to four by now, and it hasn't gone up to four. It's there's, still sitting there at three and a half. There's a couple of books that it's actually gone up to four. Um, okay, but not okay. many, and and that's what surprises me is that, you know, you would expect with that much money coming in on them. Like that it would that it would move up, but instead, I mean, it's well, no, no, it's actually no, it's it's three and a half across the board now. That's at uh, I do think what, Westgate, I, I MGM, do, do William think, Hill, CG, Circa, et cetera. I do think one of the stories we could be talking about if it goes Wisconsin's way this weekend. I think one of the stories we could be talking about is Jim Harbaugh benching Shea Patterson in this game. Yeah. That if he's a if he's a debacle, like and he keeps like that dude just fumbles the ball all the time. It's unbelievable. Um, he always just seems the way to let. He just like let. He like pulls a Clint Sterner like all the time. You know, I, I wonder. Only did it once, like put the ball on the ground. Like this dude does it like three times a game. It seems well, they like, they fumbled he, eight times this year. They've lost five of them. Which yeah, like, I mean, it's yeah, just I mean, as he, likely he, that they lose two of them. But when you fumble that many times, like it, it's not going to be good for anybody. So no, it's but not. I, it's like, I it's, wonder if some of it Washington, is just they don't care in the first two games. You know, the if you watch I mean, the it, you and I talked about the Middle Tennessee State game, right? And yeah. you know, you, we weren't super worried about it because they did what they had to do. They only won by nineteen, but that's like a weird offense. They weren't able to get pressure because. Middle Tennessee knows they got to get the ball out super fast. They were getting it out yeah. on average like 1.8 seconds after the snap. So there's no time to like get a pass rush or anything like that. And Wisconsin's not going to do that. So you know that Michigan's yeah. defensive ends and their linebackers are raring to go after uh, a quarterback like this. And they weren't able to get any pressure on Army because they only threw the ball four times. And, and two right, of them got picked. Right. So like... I think that Michigan is better than we're giving them credit for, but they went up against some super quirky offenses 
and now they're playing just a standard pro style, you know, run the ball offense. And I think they've got the dudes to be able to actually play against them. I think people might be underestimating Michigan here and like I don't like Harbaugh in the in the underdog spot because obviously the stat that's been thrown around, he's 0 6 straight up as an underdog, two and four against the spread. But, you know, one of the 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 two times that he covered as the underdog was when the line was like three and a half, four. So he yeah, hadn't won the game. I mean, and, and but. I, no, and I look I love Harbaugh from because obviously I'm a 49ers fan from what he did with the 49ers, taking us to NFC championship game. Super Bowl and an NFC Championship game when we had like sucked for ten straight years, so I love him for that. And always will. Um, he gave me in my adulthood. He gave me like happy forty ninety, happy forty nine er years. So that was great. Um, no, I mean I get that. I get that. I also here's one and one of and one of the th- other things with Wisconsin though is like their passing game with that quarterback has been so much more efficient this year than it was last year. Yeah, he's but actually accurate. I, <laughs> it, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, but I did hear I did hear that they're expecting like some crosswinds, like 16, 17 mile an hour crosswinds. Yeah. So that hurts you trying to throw the ball. So if this turns into a ground and pound game. Um, Michigan has not been like amazing against the rush this year. They're like 31st in the country in rush defense. Um, which is still which pretty is good when you're playing, like when one of the two games yeah, that you've played good. is against Army, right? Right. Is against Army. Yeah. And Wisconsin is like top five in rush defense. Again, they they've played, played no one in Central Michigan. <laughs> Who yeah, are Charlie both Strong's not good. Awful. Central Michigan's like, and Central, yeah, Central Michigan's like battling like Akron and UMass, to like the worst team in the country. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's not, yeah, and, and they haven't given up a point. Here's what I will say Wisconsin will give up a point this week. They will give up points for the first time all year this week. That I think I could agree with for that. Sure. <laughs> uh, they, yeah, they will give up some points. I, I hope Michigan pulls it off. I'm, pr- I'm going to stay away from it, and I'm just going to root for Michigan um, again because I like Harbaugh. Um, I something tells me someone's gonna buy Michigan tomorrow morning or Saturday morning. Yeah, somebody's gonna do it. There's gonna be somebody with big money that goes in and puts some big money on Michigan. I could, I could see it. I can, especially yeah, if it if it sticks at three and a half. Somebody's gonna, yeah, yeah, it yeah, sticks. I it can sticks see at somebody three and going in and dropping like twenty five thousand on them. Dropping twenty five thousand on Michigan, if because it, it is one of these, if it is a straight up pro style game, Michigan has better recruit, better athletes, better players. Um, it is one of these things, man. Like, dude, I, I, the why the reason I can't bet on Michigan is like, dude, I just I don't trust Jay Patterson. I do not trust him, and so like that's why I can't bet on Michigan. Yeah, Chris, Chris felt the same way. He said he he absolutely shrinks that's in big time spots. And I agree. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that's it. And that's I can't. That's I can't. That's why I just can't get behind the guy. Um, NFL, there ain't much here, man. No, there um, is not. No, and and once we get done with these, I we'll like, uh, we'll I, wrap up I, the I, show. But who? There's nothing on this yeah, slate. I buy yet because because I, I got to get to bed too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I got the I got the I got the gym calling me in about like uh six like seven hours. hours. Yeah, six uh, seven hours. Yeah, six, seven hours. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I like, I'd buy the half point and buy the Rams down to two and a half, and I'd take the Rams. Yep. Um, look, dude, we saw the Titans tonight. The Titans kicked the crap out of the Browns. Yeah. And, like, the Browns killed the Jets. So, like, all that made me think was the Jets. Well, okay, they're bad. We know they're bad. Um, and then, like, the Browns played the Jets with the Jets' real quarterback. Like, Donald's not there, so – yeah, whoop de doo They knocked out Trevor Simeon, and they beat a third-string quarterback. Yeah, and that Jets like, defense I mean, didn't have – uh, Browns have done – Yeah, they didn't have Mosley. They didn't have – and, and Baker yeah, Mayfield's Jets, passer. They, they didn't have Quinn Williams. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and his, uh, his completion percentage actually went down. Right. Like, so I, I, I think the Rams – I mean, I think the Rams cover that easy. That's that's the one I like. And your boy, and your boy and Chris going to be there? Yeah, he'll he'll actually be at the game. Yeah, he's he's flying yeah, out on Friday. Game. Um, I've heard there there could be some weather. Um, 
So yeah. maybe I, I actually kind of like the under in the game too. I kind of like the under. Uh, one of the one of the one of my one of my rules I have in the NFL because I saw the stat last year. If the total goes off, if the total is in the fifties, bet the under. Because sixty two percent of the time last year, totals in the fifties. That when the game time when the game went off and the total was in the fifties, sixty two percent of the time last year, the game ended up going under the total. So well, it it has uh, been bet down. The Rams and Browns, like oh, it, it's been bet down. It opened. It was like it 51, was fifty one and a half is where yeah. it opened. Yeah, okay. opened to fifty one, got bet up to fifty two. Forty nine. Like no, it's even further than it. It's forty seven and forty seven and a half across the board. Wow, I think people got, got the the weather. Time. Um, well, we were talking about, we were talking about the Michigan game. I saw the Michigan Wisconsin over under went, got hammered down to 45. Oh yeah. Um, Oh, it's, it's way down. Yeah, it's, uh, it down. is 44 uh, and a half right now. Another one that's gotten hammered down the Ravens and the chiefs over under, I'm still, I'm still not going to even, even take the under in this one, even though my rule says take the under that Ravens chiefs, man, it opened at 56 and I think it's down to 52 and a half now. Um. Yeah, it's people it's, been ham, hammering the under on the Ravens and Chiefs game. Yeah, and that's like I played the uh, the kinda, Raiders and Chiefs last week, and and played over fifty two and got killed on it. Yeah, man. I, I should have told you that, man. If the totals in the fifties, yeah. just bet the under. If you're gonna bet one way, bet the under on it. Um, because the under there's been four totals have been in the fifties when game when the games kicked off. Four totals have been in the fifties. Three of them have gone under. The only one to go over was the Texans Saints game on Monday night, the Monday night football game, and they needed ten points in the final minute of the game to go over the <laughs> to go over the total. So I yeah. mean, think about that. Think, no, and that's literally like the only time that has ever happened in Monday night football history where the lead has changed twice inside a minute. Oh, it was in the final minute of the beautiful. game. So literally, it's the only it's the only time that has ever happened. Oh, I love that game. I had the Texans <laughs> plus seven, and I had them over twenty three and a half points. I love that game. Oh yeah, um, I can imagine that. <laughs> another one. I, look, it, 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 my head. Uh, look, my the, the numbers tell me to take the Raiders and take the Broncos. Raiders plus eight and a half. Broncos plus seven and a half. But I ain't betting on Joe Flacco again. Um, and after that and performance I, by the Raiders Minnesota last week, Holmes, like, ugh. yeah, and, and Minnesota, Minnesota at home is a different team. Yeah. They're a different team. But I mean, again, you know what Minnesota's going to do? They's going to run the ball. That's what that's what that's what uh, Stefanski wants to do. And well, they they the will Cook, and, so long as they get a lead. You know that's that's where the problem is. Right. Been. Well, and then Kirk Cousins he'll throw a pick to somebody. Exactly. I did like the Lions. <laughs> But that Lions game is now down to six. It's the Eagles minus six now. So I, I don't like it as much anymore. Yeah. Um, I liked it when the Lions were getting a full touchdown. Um, I kind of like Redskins plus four on Monday night against the Bears just because I don't know who the Bears are beating by more than four points. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, you I got, got a point there. Like that offense is. Somebody by, whew, but, that offense is terrible. But, like, yeah, like you and I, you and, yeah, you and I talked about this game off, off the air and, like, that it is like, you know, Dude, have the Bears gotten a defensive touchdown yet this year? I don't think so. Not yet. Well, they didn't, well, they didn't score a touchdown in the first week against Green Bay. And they only got and one so, last week. I don't think they got one last week. So Right. Yeah, it was the so offensive touchdown last they week. They could but be it, due for a defense. Yep, especially against Case Keenum. They could be due. They could, they, 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 right. They can be due for a defensive touchdown. Uh, and over, I, I will say, Patriots-Jets, I think it's 23 and a half is the first half. Total, I'd I'd probably go under that. Patriots Jets under twenty three and a half in the first half. I probably would do that. Yeah, because I don't think the Jets that score, and I think I New take. England takes a little bit to get rolling. Probably, I think New England's probably up fourteen nothing, seventeen nothing at halftime. Like I mean, that's twenty one nothing at halftime. But like I, like they took a while to get rolling last week. Um, if you want to take the Patriots minus like 13 and a half in the first half, that's not bad. The Cowboys are like minus 12 and a half in the first half against the Dolphins. Not a bad one either. Um, I'd expect both of those. I expect the Patriots and Cowboys to both be up by two touchdowns at the end of the first half. So those wouldn't be two bad ones either. I'm eight and three in the NFL this season, man. You, I, you I killed, killed it. Them. But I think, but I think one of the reasons this is why I'm, 
Like, I'm very particular about what I bet in the NFL because it's so freaking hard. I think I look at everything so hard. Like, I look at it so much more, and I'm like, okay, no, 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 no. All right, yeah, okay. The Ram, I'm like, okay, the Rams only got to win by three points. All right, cool, I'll take that. The Ram, Like, it's the freaking Rams. They only got to win by three. I'll roll with that. Um, yeah, I mean, that, so, those yeah. you you look that's, for where that's, there's that's the, the biggest advantage. The main advantage. one I like is – yeah, I, I the main one I buy the Rams from three to two and a half, um, just because the reason you do that is just so many NFL games end up in like a, a field goal game. Oh, yeah. um, I think they'll probably win by more. Th- I think they'll win by more than three. I think the Rams probably beat the Browns by like ten. But um, but Sunday night football I, there for the first time in a decade. Half. Yeah, there's there's weird things right. could happen. Weird things can happen. There's no doubt about it. Weather could be a little bit of an issue. I heard there could be some there could be some rain. That could be a problem. Um, the Rams' offensive line is not great, and Miles Garrett seemingly loves to like, you know, personal, <laughs> personal people. foul calls, but also <laughs> sack you. And like he looks like the most unbelievable defensive football. He looks like freaking Lawrence Taylor out there. Yeah. Um, so, like, yeah, you know, like he's, he's he so ridiculous. Jared Goff. That's, that was, that was he one of the things, uh, like, Chris was so frustrated in the offseason because there was nowhere that he could find where you could bet on defensive player of the year odds. And he wanted to bet Miles yeah. Garrett for defensive player of the year. And he that you can't you can't find the odds anywhere. <laughs> like that the prop isn't out. Yeah. So I looked and I found defensive rookie of the year odds. Yeah, you can find all the rookie find stuff. Defensive player of the, yeah. Yeah, I could not find defensive player of the year either because my pick would have been uh Bradley Chubb. That's who I was gonna that's who I was gonna uh go I, mean, with. I, could, I was gonna roll with Bradley Chubb. I could see that. Like I, the only issue is, yeah, like it, I mean, it, I mean, the team is so bad. Like I, I don't know. Yeah, the <laughs> team is bad. Well, hey, hey, the Browns might be pretty bad too. Uh, yeah, you that's know? It, now everybody hyped I'm up the Browns. I never ju- I, yeah. hey, I'm glad I didn't jump on that hype trade, man. I was like, they ain't won nothing yet, man. Yeah. Everybody's just getting too excited because it's Baker and he talks a lot and they get no Del Beckham. But I'm like, they ain't, they ain't, to quote the great Tony Allen, they ain't ever won nothing. <laughs> who it was Delaney Walker, the uh, the Titans tight end after the game. They said they are who we thought they were. Like they they yeah. are who we thought Did they the, were. Uh, the Denny Green. Yep, hundred yeah. percent. Paid homage to the late great Denny Green. Yeah, Shout absolutely. Out to Denny Green. All right, so what uh, what what do you got to finish up here so we can uh, we can go on and get out of here and both of us go get in the bed. All right, yeah. Let's. All right, here. Final pick. We're gonna do Georgia minus seven and a half in the first half. Okay. We're gonna do Ohio State minus twenty four and a half in the first half. Um. Yeah, let's do Ohio State minus thirty eight and a half for the game. Okay. Um. I, hey, hey, this is basically I, those lines are huge. I know they are, but Ohio State has worked for me so far this year every week. So I'm gonna roll with them again. I don't you know. I'm gonna hey, roll with you them keep again. riding them until they buck you. Exactly. Let's go Washington State minus ten and a half in the first half, um, and let's go Colorado plus seven and a half. And let's roll with that Texas Oklahoma State over. Let's do it over <laughs> seventy two and a half. Let's. We know Gundy's um, going to score points. NFL, we know. <laughs> yeah, in the NFL, we'll do the Patriots Jets under twenty three and a half in the first half, and we'll do the Rams. We'll buy it down to two and a half. We'll do the Rams minus two and a half. All right, I like it. All right, that's going to wrap up the show. He is John Roser. He is Johnny the Fish. He is Johnny First Half. Go check him out. On the Chris Vernon Show, he is the what? What is it? Executive producer or just producer? Do do we have a nice big yeah, title? Whatever, yeah, just <laughs> Renaissance man. You you can get him on Twitter at John underscore Roser. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the show. We're on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, whatever your favorite podcast app is. Go over to the website winningcureseverything dot com. The show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Go check them out, tunicatravel.com. 
that is going to wrap it up, and we are out of here. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.